Hello guys, and today we are going to see whether this converges or diverges. Okay, to do this, we need to use the ratio test, and the ratio test is basically saying as limit from when n approaches infi to infinity, when your equation is the absolute value of n sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Okay, let's try to create this out of this. A n is just the original equation that we are already starting with. Okay, so that's going to be easy. So this, this, yeah. And then a absolute value sign. And our, our original equation, this, we will just rewrite that. And then a sub n plus 1. There is a plus 1 beside n. And that's what we will do plusing 1 beside the n. For the denominator, when we have the plus 1, we have a parenthesis and then a factorial from all of that. Okay, so a sub n plus 1 is this, so let's write it here. We will simplify this long equation thingy into a more like a real equation yes so the limit as n approaches infinity that's nothing changes there but here it does what I do is with this I multiply okay I'll show you guys an example a circle is the toppest thing over a square is this thing Okay, so the third level, that's the fourth level. And then a triangle, which is the second level, is this thing. And then a long rectangle is this thing. I just do circle times the long rectangle over square times a triangle. Yes. And... This is just my way of doing it. It's just a shortcut from all of the nonsenses and stuff. Okay. Anyway, I will make this not simplified. So reverse simplified. I will make it more crazy to cancel it, cancel some stuff out. X to the power of n plus 1. That can be... The same thing as x to the power of 1, I mean n, times x to the power of 1. Yes. And then a over n plus 1, being parenthesized, and then a times factorial. That is just the ongoing n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and then times n minus 3. Okay, it's already starting to be lo very long, so I will cut it short there. And then we have a times n factorial. n factorial is n times n minus 1, n times n minus 2, and then I will cut it short right there as well, and then a factorial. Over x to the power of n. You really can't simplify anything with that. So, we just write it as what we got. An absolute value sign and a limit we should have as n approaches infinity. x to the power of n from the numerator and the denominator can just cancel out. And then from here are the same thing as here and they're both a denominator and a numerator, so that, that just cancels out to be 1. So the only thing we are left to, with is just limit as n approaches infinity with the absolute value of x over n plus 1. Okay, and when n approaches infinity, yeah, when from the limit, when n approaches infinity, we get 0. But what about this times x? Okay, that is just absolute value of 1 over n plus 1. 
times the factorial of n. This is 0, 0 times x, whatever that thing is, even if it's a million, 1, it doesn't matter. That's just always 0. But wait. So we get that this thing converges. So this thing converges, converges as x is being through between this point. Okay, I don't know if I said that like very clearly, but suppose x is between infinity and this, okay? What does that mean? I don't know. It, it's a big number, infinity, that is. And that it still could be meaning that that is possible to be 1. And this is this is possible that it is negative 1. And a 0 0.001. And this is this can be negative 0 0.0001. But only infinity and negative infinity cannot be is 0. So when x is 0, this whole thing converges is as to be zero. Okay, we are done, but there's one more thing we have to do. One more ratio test from an equation that we will try to solve. Which that equation is, hmm. Is this n factorial times x to the power of n. Hmm. We use the ratio test again, and we know that when using the ratio test, the formula is that when we have the limit as n approaching to infinity from the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. a n is our, our original equation. All right. a n is our original equation, which is just n factorial times x to the power of n and then a sub n plus 1 we just discussed it that I will just write it and then a times n to the power of x to the power of n plus 1 okay again we make this even more complicated so we can cancel things out. Sorry, guys. n plus 1 factorial, that is n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. And then you guys see the point. We will end it there by setting a factorial sign. And then a times x to the power of n plus 1 can also be equal to x to the power of n times x to the power of 1. Wow, very amazing. Over n, factorial can be expressed as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and then I will cut it short right there also, and then it times x to the power of n. We really can't make this more, you know, all like, yeah, very hard. I can cancel out the x to the power of n, the numerator, and from the denominator, that is equal to 1. And then from here, here, for the same thing as this, that is both being on the numerator and the denominator. So it all cancels out to be equal to 1. Now what are we left with? Well, that is just limit as n approaches infinity, we have n plus 1 times x times x of absolute value. So when n approaches infinity, so when n approaches infinity, we get infinity as well. You know, that's very weird. Converges to infinity, that's not making sense. Because it only converges, converges unless, yes, this is very like big power thingy, converges unless 
x is equal to 0. A nice, very pleasant finishing. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye.